Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up a basic GUI and the necessary logic for its buttons. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up basic GUI buttons and how to execute commands when clicking them. For this tutorial, you will only need Blender's game engine that comes with the latest version of Blender. In this first part of the tutorial, I'd like to show you how to set up the basic buttons for our GUI, such as a mouse over and a mouse click button. For that purpose, I will create a few planes that represent our buttons. We can later add textures to those planes that then represent a real button, such as a texture with a text so that we know which button that does which action. So we can also add an image or anything we can think of in our GUI. So let's first off create this basic button and I will call that basic so we know that's our main button that we will always see when nothing is touched or clicked. And we also need to change the mesh name like in the last tutorial. So go to the outliner, select the object name and then click this little plus and change the mesh name as well. I will also create two other buttons which will represent the mouse over and the mouse click effect. This one will be the mouse over and I will also change the mesh name to mouse over and this one will be the mouse click and mouse down for mesh name. So I will assign different textures so we can recognize them in the engine. So the basic button will be quite dark the mouse over button might stay this bright and the mouse down button might be a color. So how do we now set up the logic so that whenever we mouse over this button, um, this texture gets added to this button. So we know we actually mouse over over the button. The first step is pretty simple. We need to set up a mouse sensor, which says mouse over. Not mouse over any, but mouse over. So we know only this object is meant. Then we will set up an added object actuator which replaces the mesh to this mesh so mouse over now let's check what it does once we mouse over the button the mouse over texture or the mouse over color will get added to this button now if we leave the area again it will not change back so we need to change this as well for that purpose we need to add another mouse sensor again with mouse over but this time invert so which means whenever the mouse is not over this button it will replace the mesh so edit object replace mesh to its original basic form so now if we go into the game mouse over and leave again it will have this mouse over effect now how do we add a mouse down or a mouse click effect. For that purpose, we just need to add another mouse sensor and tell it left button if you want the left click to be the click that actually um, yeah, plays this or, or adds this effect and edit object, replace mesh to our mouse down mesh. Again, over, replace it to the mouse over effect and click will now change it to the click effect. But once we let go of the mouse click, it won't change only if we mouse down again. So if I now let go, it should change to the mouse over again and not stay like it's clicked. We only need to set up another mouse sensor for that. Similar to the step before, we need to invert it. So whenever it's not clicked, it should, should stay on the um, mouse over so we can just connect it to the mouse over and not click. So if it's over the button, the mouse, and it's not clicked, it will use the mouse over mesh. So click, leave the click, it will get, go back to mouse over and leave the button. So now we have set up what I'd like to call the basic HTML kind of settings. So mouse over and mouse down are usually very common in HTML coding. Now, if you want to do this for more than one button, you need to recreate all of those three again. So we can't just duplicate this one as it will apply the logic to all three at the same time. So if I click one of them, the logic will get added to all three. 
which means you need to recreate a basic, a mouse over and a mouse down button for every new button you add to your GUI. Now this is an example of how I used exactly the logic I just showed you to create buttons for an interface in my RTS demo. So we've got this mouse over and mouse down buttons and I applied this effect to these two here. So whenever my mouse over, the saturation gets increased because these mouse over button images have more saturation than these um, two basic buttons. And if I now mouse down, the mouse click gets added. And if I leave it again, it also gets reset to the mouse over. And if I leave the button, it gets reset to the basic image. So how do we now execute commands when clicking a button? For that purpose, I will recreate a button and set up the logic for clicking again, mouse over and mouse left button. And now basically anything from this side, any actuator can be connected to this button. So if we click it, anything that's possible here can happen. So let's for example say um, the game gets quit. So we get a quit button. So if we now start the game and click this button, it will quit it again. So you have a quit button for your menu this easy. Now if you add the visual effects I've shown you in the first part of this tutorial to this button, you will already have quite an advanced GUI button. So the thing I just showed you only works if the button is also in the same scene as yeah, basically the rest of the object. So we didn't add an overlay scene for a GUI. So let's say we now have the game itself on a different layer. So I'll call this the game. Whoops, caps. So this is the game layer. And we now want to add an overlay scene which contains our buttons. Therefore, we need um, cameras. So let's set this camera up. And increase the scale. I set it to auto graphics so that there is no um, perspective in our buttons. A GUI should always be 2D. And so this is our quit button for now. I'll go into the game and set up another camera on this new scene, which doesn't need to be autographic, obviously. Um, and this is our main game scene now. So we always, once the game start, want to add our um, GUI scene. So add overlay scene, the scene, it's not renamed yet. So once we start the game, we also have this button in here. Keep in mind, whenever you execute a scene, any information on the options is taken from that scene. So we added to this uh, scene that our mouse is visible, but this doesn't work if the game scene is the first that gets executed and doesn't have this option. So always anything you set, the resolution and the cursor options will get applied to the first scene you start. So now we do have this cursor and if I click here, it ends the game, even though it's on a different layer. So now let's see what we can do with um, manipulating things from our GUI in the game. So we have it on a different layer now. So basically we can't interact with the objects that are in the scene, or can we? This is pretty easy. Therefore, we will use the basic message system. So let's say we have this cube here and we want to end it if we click a certain button in the menu. So you can again use any actuator with this um, button clicking system. So let's say again, we want to end this once this object is pressed. Now we can't um, just shift click the layers and connect it to our object as they are in different scenes. But what we can do is send a message to that object. So we will message that cube that it's supposed to end. Now, once we click this, the object will send this message to the cube. But how does the cube receive it? That's also very simple. Add a sensor, message, and just what is it supposed to receive to perform this action? So it should receive the message end. And once it receives that, it ends the object. So let's see if that works. Yes, so we click the button and the object's va object vanishes. So we can basically send any message from our GUI to our objects and they will execute the actuator that's connected. 
So this is now an example of this working in my um, tower defense demo I've created. I've activated um, the visibility on the tracker so you can actually see what's happening here. And if I left click right now, nothing is going to happen because the build mode is executed by a boolean. So only if it's true, I can place buildings. Now if I click this GUI button here, the boolean will be set to true with a message and now I can place a building. Now this building costs 100 gold, so I execute this once and it won't work anymore because I have zero gold now. Maybe in a future tutorial I will tell you how this works as well, but for now it's just important to see that this GUI button executed a message or sent a message which um, allowed me to place a building which isn't possible without clicking that button before. Alright, so that's already it for this tutorial. This was just a very basic first view on GUI button creation and I hope I can expand on that in the future. So as always, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, just leave me feedback and thanks for watching.